So we need to start by talking about how our body senses or detects things. Um, this is called sens sensory transduction. So sensory transduction um, is the process in which physical energy is converted into a neural signal. So physical energy could be, is a stimulus, something like light or touch or sound. And why a neural signal? Well, that's something that can be detected and, and um, processed by our body. So we're converting this message from something in the environment, some physical stimulus, to something our body can do something with. Um, another way of saying this is this is going to be taking a stimulus and resulting in a change in membrane potential. Changes in membrane potential are what initiate neural signals, right? Okay, um, so let's kind of draw this out with what I have down here. Um, this represents the outside world, actually could be potentially inside as well. We have a lot of sensory going on in our body. Just for simplicity, start with something, um, some stimulus in the outside world. So this could be light, it could be touch, it could be sound, whatever that is, that's some physical stimulus that carries information. Our bodies can't, um, our central nervous systems can't do anything with that information. So we need to transduce it. This raw data comes in and is detected by a receptor in our body. So sensory receptors, this is the process of um, sensation. So sensation is our body, the, the effect of sensory transduction. So we're converting the raw data to a neural signal. Our receptor is doing that, and that allows for sensation. Oftentimes, when we have sensation, we have perception of that sensation. So perception is something that can also happen. This is when we're aware of what we've sensed. And this happens if the information travels not just to the CNS, um, but to the a primary cortex. So for example, um, light would be detected by photoreceptors. There's several points of processing in the central nervous system, but only if it reaches the primary visual cortex is it perceived. So main point here, two points. One is about sensory transduction. So again, that conversion of a physical stimulus to a change in membrane potential that allows for a neural signal, um, ultimately action potential to be carried to the central nervous system. And then the other idea being um, for perception to occur, that the information must travel to a primary cortex in the cerebral cortex of the cerebrum. Okay. So I wanna just kind of diagram what the sensory cell might be doing. Um, there's different types of sensory cells, we'll go into that, but here, here is one that connects all the way right from um, sensory endings, we'll call them for now, to the central nervous system is where we're going to contact here, right? So what happens is we have a stimulus. Receptors are going to detect that and typically open ion channels. 
either directly or indirectly, as we've seen before. So that's what's going to cause ion channels will open. Might have an ion flow in. Now we have a change in membrane potential. We've gone from resting membrane potential to a change in membrane potential. That often is going to result in an action potential. If threshold is reached, the stimulus is large enough. Now we've got a signal to our CNS. The size of um, the stimulus is going to be proportional to the change in um, the membrane and the intensity ultimately of how we perceive the stimulus. So for example, a louder sound will be sensed as louder and if we perceive it, perceived as louder by our central nervous system. So we're gonna start with talking about a little bit more about the receptors, different types of receptors um, and the different types of stimuli that they respond to.